Hey folks, Steve here with another World in Flames video. I have to apologize, as usual, for my very long absence in doing a World in Flames video. While I managed to fit in a few unboxing videos and a few other things, uh, life has been incredibly busy lately, um, much busier than I'd like, honestly. Uh, and I haven't been able to do <clears throat> uh, anything related to World in Flames, on this table anyway, for quite a long time. Um, so I want to try to get things back uh, in action here and get us into the November-December 1940 turn, uh, which might end up being a very swift turn. We'll, we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I even had to remind myself where things were at from the last time I played. So we had done the, the Vichification, the, uh, the Vichy rules for France. That has been set up. Um, you know, the Axis is looking quite strong in the Mediterranean, so the sort of the eastern <clears throat> corners of the Mediterranean have been put under control of the Italians. There are still uh, British units in Egypt that are out of supply and besieged uh, by Italians that can't quite seem to crack the nut there. Uh, Tunisia has been conquered, and Algeria and Morocco in almost all... Uh, French territory is Vichy, except for Cameroon uh, in the mid-Congo um, down in Africa, which is where the capital of Free France now is. Um, but what we're probably going to have happen in November, December is a collapse of Vichy France and the uh, basically, you know, German offensives into... Uh, Spain, very likely, anyway. And I'm not sure how this is really supposed to go. Um, I don't know enough uh, about the game to um, be sure how this works. Like, I, I, I obviously know World in Flames, but I've never collapsed Vichy and invaded Spain before. So, so for me, this is all I don't really know how well this is going to go, um, other than we, we may try <clears throat> to get into Spain while putting pressure on the UK itself and maybe even get some uh, initial landings done uh, to keep that pressure up. So, um, like I said, uh, some interesting things that we're going to work to uncover here in time um, and, and we'll see how well it goes. Um, the other thing we'll probably be looking at <clears throat> is uh, looking to align Romania and get Romania in proper uh, from the German perspective, um, and yeah, well, we're going to look into all of that as we get going here. I have to kind of remind myself, I believe I aligned Hungary, uh, and I believe I aligned Bulgaria, but I have not yet aligned Romania, and there's still uh, sort of the tug-of-war going with the entry chits on the eastern front with Russia, uh, nothing really, you know, coalescing around, um, you know, one or the other willing to declare war. Uh, the main thing is, probably within the first couple of impulses of this turn, it will be evident to the Allied side of my brain that the Axis are going for a sea lion and invasion of Spain, right? We're going to know that. Which is going to change what the USSR is doing on a strategic level. So far, they've just been preparing, they've been doing you know, very minor uh, political things, building up their force, expecting that the Germans were going to come at them in '41. Um, and ordinarily, that's what you kind of have to prepare for. But now that I see, and the Allies see, what is going to be happening on the Western Front, that's going to change things and force the USSR into a position of trying to eventually go on the offensive to put pressure on the Germans. Um, but that will all start to play out here over time. Hopefully the Germans have played, you know, low-key enough here, right, that it's going to take a while for the Soviets to be able to do that. That might buy the Germans enough time to knock the UK out, uh, keep the US kind of off the continent for as long as possible, and then be in a position to face the Russians uh, a little differently, um, and especially with the Med kind of controlled and, and taken. But we're going to see how all this plays out. There's still a lot more uh, to uncover in terms of how these guys are all going to uh, face off. There's a lot of air power questions around the Med that we still have to kind of find out uh, on, and, yeah, just a lot more to go here. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little rusty. We'll, we'll try to do what we can, and we'll, uh, get into things here with the November, November December turn. We're going to do reinforcements. There's not a huge amount of reinforcements to handle, um, but we'll take a look at that next. Um, then lending, and then we'll get into the initiative. So, um, 
yeah, we're, we're going to get into it. Glad, glad to be back and to try to keep moving this forward. Um, I may reach a point where I, I kind of have to give up and package everything up because there's other games I'm interested in maybe trying to play, uh, and I need the room in the, in the game room here to do it, but um, I don't know. I, I've still got the energy for it, so we'll see how far we get. Okay, so let's talk reinforcements. Um, Americans are going to be pretty easy. We're going to have the uh, South Dakota battleship go into the construction pool. We're going to have a, uh, a transport go into the Americas, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we're going to have another transport go into the construction pool. Now, the Americans do have uh, a couple amp uh, amphibious transports in the construction pool. They probably want to get those built uh, sometime soon, get them going. Um, knowing that we're at the end of 40, I mean, we could see some cases of the U.S. getting into the war um, maybe next year or the year after in 42, just depending on how everything plays out. So I um, want to get those going. Uh, the Bulgarians get a infantry unit, which we can put into uh, Sofia, I guess. Uh, then we have, let's see, the Russians get quite a bit. They get a cap. Okay, slight distraction. Um, Soviets have armor, cavalry, infantry, and infantry, which I mean, they'll simply go into uh, simply go into the Soviet Union. So pretty straightforward stuff there. Get these guys set up as well as we can, I guess is going to be the key thing. Okay, then the Italians are going to get uh, a number of naval units back in with their fleet, which is currently based in Taranto, so the Italian fleet gets a little bit of a buff from repairing some damaged units from before. Uh, the Germans are going to get a transport. Um, oh, I think this was a face down transport actually. I'll have to go double check, but I think that was a face down transport and then they get a fighter back, a decent fighter. I think that transport was face down. I'm worried I screwed it up, but I believe it was face down. Um, so we will see how that goes. Uh, and then finally the Commonwealth has the Revenge and the Glorious back, so some aircraft carrier and battleship action. So I think we'll end up putting the Glorious. Okay, <laughs> camera's screwing up all sorts of issues today. Um, the Battleship Revenge and the Glorious aircraft carrier going into Plymouth, uh, major port in the UK, it should give them a little bit of flexibility in terms of where they go. So that's all for the reinforcement stage. In terms of lending resources, I'm gonna keep the same trade agreements so the Germans are going to give the Italians some, uh, the uh, uh, U.S. is going to give five to the Commonwealth, um, and I think that is it. I think that's all we're going to do. Uh, so we should be able to do the initiative stage. So right now it's even initiative, Axis wins ties, so rolling. Um, and that is uh, Axis Initiative, that four to three. So we will have, I guess I should change the impulse marker over here, Axis. Um, and then uh, we're going to get into the action stage. So I'll just go ahead and get us uh, started here, um, knowing that the last turn was rain. There's no plus, so we're going to roll for weather, November, December. It's going to be possibly quite bad. It is actually fine everywhere. Um, so we are looking at a wonderf wonderfully great late winter, um, which provides the access and opportunity to uh, make something of the action over here in Western Europe. So, um, okay. I'm going to start thinking through the uh, 
impulse actions and what the Germans and Italians are going to do. Now I was getting all ready to go and I realized um, that at the beginning of the impulse the Axis has to make their uh, declaration of war phase decisions which include the alignment of Romania and I believe the collapse of Vichy. Um, yes, so this would happen at the end of the declaration of war stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have Germany align Romania. I believe we can do that um, because now we have their Vichy and of course I have to find my rule book which is in a bag at the moment, um, but I believe that to be the case. I think we're good to go there. So Romania, uh, Romania allowed the claim. We may align in neutral Romania during any Axis declaration war step in which France is currently conquered, or Vichy France exists, which, yeah, we, we've done that. Um, so uh, we can align Romania. That is a U.S. entry chit roll, so we're going to roll the die for that. Uh, it is no U.S. entry, which is good for the Axis. Um, so now Romania comes in. And I had the Romanian unit set up over here. I'm not going to worry about their exact placement on camera right now. I'll finagle something here shortly and go set them up appropriately. I sort of set them up in practice, but uh, I have to look at the units and which ones are going to go onto the uh, production spiral and all that kind of fun stuff, which I'll do off camera later. Um, and then the other thing we have to decide then is, are we going to collapse Vichy? And I think that's a U.S. entry hit. Um, I'm looking right now. Uh, let's see. I believe we already... I think we already did the U.S. entry for conquering France. I think so. Uh, but we got to do it again because we're collapsing Vichy. So uh, the U.S. is going to get another chit. It's a two. And then we're going to roll to see if there's another one. And there is, which is a one. So very bad U.S. entry jaw draw for the U.S. there. Not great at all. <coughs> and let me see if there's any others that matter here. I don't think I see any. We are not declaring war on Spain yet, by the way. We're going to wait an impulse. We're going to use this impulse to get situated, but we're going to collapse Vichy first. Um, and yeah, I do not see any other issues for the moment um, for this. So we should be good, I believe. Um to go ahead and do the Collapse Vichy stuff. Okay, so let's uh, proceed through this, and it'll be kind of interesting to see exactly how, how it goes. So, um, first thing that happens is that all the non-Vichy France territories now become aligned with Free France. So that includes Algeria, that includes uh, Morocco, um, and that means that uh, for all of those regions... Um, they're back to the Allies, which means the Axis can move into them and attack them and all that good stuff. Um, it also means those areas are in cooperation with the Commonwealth because Free France uh, cooperates with the Commonwealth. So the Allies get that little bit of bonus. Then all of Vichy France here becomes part of Occupied France, which is territory controlled by the Axis. Um, and then I believe the way this goes... Um, is that all Vichy land and aircraft units, now in Axis controlled hexes, are moved to the, fr moved to the free, French front, uh, free French force pools. All Vichy land and aircraft units on the turn record chart are also moved to the free French force pool if Vichy France was Axis controlled at the moment of collapse, which it was. Um, so basically, the units that are in Morocco, for instance, uh, those are free French. Uh, the French stuff on the production spiral, which of which there are none, um, are, you know, uh, are good. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they would have gone to Free French, but they're not there anymore. Uh, they would have gone to, um, 
the force pool, uh, then these units here all go to the free French force pool. So they all basically go poof, essentially. Uh, so that's it for them. Um, no access major power controls Vici France at the moment of Vici collapse. All Vici markers and naval units on the turn record chart become free French. Otherwise, Vici pilots, okay, so that doesn't matter. We're not playing with pilots. Um, and I'm wondering if. Okay, all the. Okay, let me just make sure this. I'm, what I'm worried about are the units in the construction and repair pool. Um, if no, da, 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 da. okay, so. Okay, all other naval units and markers on the turn record chart are controlled by that axis major power. So in effect, all the French stuff that is in the repair pool and in the construction pool become German, I think, if I'm reading all of that right. No, ma Yeah, because an axis major power controlled VG France. We control VG France, I guess, is how I would interpret that. Now, all on-map Vichy naval units are now free French, so we've got some business to deal with down here. Uh, those in the hex controlled by an axis major power, which would be the ports here in occupied France, uh, are treated as if surprise during overrun, which means we're going to have to roll and see what happens to them. Each on-map Vichy marker becomes controlled by the power that controls the hex. That's not really relevant here. If an allied unit enters Vichy France before Vichy has collapsed, and that's not really relevant here. So basically, all we're going to do now uh, is uh, we are going to uh, roll for all of these units down here. So we're going to have to get the, uh, the overrun stuff pulled up and adjudicate that for each individual unit. Um, and I'm going to find that any second. Overrunning naval units. Okay. All right. I got that uh, up, and I will begin to adjudicate that in just a minute. Surprise during overrun. Yeah. So we're going to do that for each of these uh, French naval units, which includes. Uh, a plane with no, or a CV with no planes, um, two convoys, and then a whole mess of cruisers and some, maybe a couple battleships it looks like. So we're going to have to roll for each of these and determine what happens to them. So if I roll, uh, if you roll a five or higher, uh, the French keep control of the unit. If we roll a 1, the Germans will get it. And if we roll a 2, or a, a two 3, or 4, it is destroyed. Um, and then they're going to... All the ones that stay allied and escape here are going to end up in a, in a Commonwealth port, allied port, face down. So they're going to be ineffective. Um, and so it probably makes sense to try to get them as far out of the Met as possible, just so they're safe, um, until they can be flipped back up, basically. Okay, so sorry, I had a, I knocked a, a Commonwealth convoy from somewhere on the south part of the Europe map, and it went flying, and I can't remember if it was a 5 or a 10, um, so apparently now the Commonwealth just have a convoy somewhere in the Gulf of Guinea that I'm not sure what it was or what it was supposed to be doing. I think it was traveling around Africa, um, but I am not sure now, so that's a bummer. Anyway, we're going to try to roll dice for these guys. 
uh, and basically, you know, uh, I sort of organized them by type. So you've got your uh, the no planes carrier, uh, two convoy counters, so five convoys equals a ship for this purpose, the battleships of the French fleet, and then the cruisers of the French fleet. Uh, so like uh, the rules explain, we are going to roll uh, Axis want a one, two, three, or four. One is great, but two, three, four is just fine and dandy. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, is good for the allies. They get to keep the unit. So it's 40% good for the Axis, 60% uh, good for the allies, and I guess you say it's weighted toward the allies, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to roll for the CV first, uh, and the CV is destroyed. So he is sunk. Uh, then for the convoy, is this first convoy is sunk, the second convoy uh, is safe, so we'll put him, I don't know, over here for now. Uh, first battleship is sunk, next battleship is also sunk, next battleship is safe, and then the next cruiser is safe, and the next cruiser is sunk, whoops, rolled and hit a bunch of British units, uh, this next one is safe, and then the final cruiser is also safe. So all things considered, um, not great for the Allies, and we can see what's left, right, we lost the carrier, uh, we lost half the convoys. We got to keep a weaker battleship or whatever that is. Might not be a battleship. Might be considered a cruiser. Um, and then we get to keep. I guess it's the majority of the lighter stuff. But I mean, those are the guys that. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess you know the allies would rather have them than not have them. But that was kind of rough. So you can see. Um, I'll just show down here um, the actual losses. So the French fleet you know, is basically cut in half, or, or maybe more than cut in half, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but that hurts. So what we're going to have to do is um, these guys need to return to base. They don't have a great amount of range. It's be one, two. They're going to have to go to Gibraltar, I guess, and they're going to be face down. Or CPU's marker on the French stuff, so uh, they don't have a yeah, like I said, they don't have a huge amount of range, so they're just going to go over here into Gibraltar. It's kind of getting messy over there, but that's how it'll be. And the rest of these things are sunk. So the air power would have been nice for the Allies to keep. The battleships would have been nice to hold on to, uh, but they are shut out. And the rest of the French fleet is face down and kind of out of commission for the turn, uh, as it is. So there you go. Um, collapse of Vichy is done. The, uh, the Germans get access to all of this, so they basically pick up, um, well, they pick up the ports, which is useful. Um, and then they get a red factory and a resource, which we'll worry about, uh, you know, cleaning up uh, in the production step. Okay, uh, with Vichy now taken care of, um, we are now able to continue on. I think probably what's going to end up happening is that the Germans are likely going to take a, I think, a land action, and they're going to start to get a lot of the, the um, army group that took France and start getting them down to the southern border. We've got good weather, which means we don't have any terrain penalties. We can just start sending guys down. We don't have to declare war in Spain yet. We can get onto the border first. Um, and so I, you know, we'll, we'll work on doing that. Um, I think with the Germans, that, that makes the most sense to me. Land will allow us to just move everything and we can kind of get situated in, in the aftermath of Case Red and taking France and all that good stuff, right? We've got to kind of get things situated. we still got to apply pressure against Britain and, and prepare for possible sea lion invasion actions. Um, the Italians are in a little bit of a tougher spot because they have a lot of things they need to do. Um, I think the German uh, unofficial DAC... Uh, is going to head west and start heading towards Algiers. Um, the Italians could potentially try to do some sort of uh, amphibious invasion of something. Um, and then we still have uh, the 
guys over here we have to deal with. So the, the Italians have a lot they actually have to do, and they don't have a lot of activity limit stuff to do it with. Um, so, for instance, like the rate challenge is going to be we need to project power into the Western Med so that if the Commonwealth tries to come out and play, we can try to punish them. We probably have enough air power, uh, naval air power, and, and fleet power to do that with, but it's going to be sort of a near-run thing. Um, the sooner we clear out Egypt, the better, and then these guys can head west, but we've still got to take care of that stack of units. And we could even be thinking about, you know, Malta uh, at the moment, but um, the Commonwealth still holds Malta, even if it's out of supply at the moment, or will be out of supply at the moment, you know, soon enough. Um, they still have it, which means it's still a potential staging ground. So we haven't knocked the Commonwealth out of the Med entirely. They just are, are back a little bit further. So, um, yeah, like I said, the Italians just have a lot they need to do. They might take a naval impulse. That will give them a few air actions, and they can kind of get set up, and they can worry about the British next, you know, next impulse, basically, or, or something along those lines. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, what we want to do there. Um, yeah. Yeah, boy, that's a tough call. It's a tough call. There's just not a whole lot more for us to be able to do um, at the moment. Okay. Well, I'm going to start prepping that and start looking at what the Italians can do with the naval stuff since that's first in the impulse. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just play through until something of consequence occurs. If nothing of consequence occurs, I'll simply show the uh, the impulse, at the end of the impulse, basically what all the access is done to get where they need to be. Okay, so after the Axis Impulse, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, the Italians did take a naval, and they got ships out. They put their naval bombers out. They even put some convoys in the Eastern Med so they can eventually get some of the oil out of Iraq. Um, but not a whole lot else went on for them. Uh, they still want to be able to beat up on the Egyptians. Um, oh, and of course I forgot to move my buddy here, so, there we go. Okay, so, uh, for the Germans who took a land action, uh, you can see our sort of North Africa Corps uh, is moving and has captured uh, Bonne, Bonne, in Algeria, um, moving along the coast there, uh, and as long as they're on the coast, they'll be in supply. I have not designated an HQ, so it's a little dangerous, but it's sort of like, you know, daring, like, okay, you know, British uh, and French, what do you want to do, right? Um, do you want to move units out? Are you going to try to get some someplace? Um, they're going to have a whole lot of trouble staying in supply in certain cases, so, um, you know, what do you want to do about that? So, just applying some pressure uh, generally, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Basically trying to front load the Western Med with Italian units, so if the Commonwealth tries to come through, we have a chance to intercept in the four box and stop them. Now, the only thing that's got me cautious is that the Commonwealth in Gibraltar have both the Victorious and the Ark Royal aircraft carriers. And basically, you know, in, in the classic game, you know, the aircraft carriers have an air capacity of two uh, for the Victorious and three for the Ark Royal. Basically, could have the Ark Royal designate its three to bomber uh, factors and have the Victorious put two anti-air factors, and they would outmatch my naval bomber here and potentially cause some real pain and suffering. So i got to watch out. I, I just don't have that much naval power, and I don't have a whole lot of fighter cover. So I, I, even with the Italian Navy as as good a shape as it's in, it doesn't matter compared to the naval air power of the Commonwealth aircraft carrier. So something's going to have, have to happen there, um, but we'll see. Uh, the, the Commonwealth just does not have a huge preponderance of force to use yet. Um, we're going to see that evolve. Now for the uh, Germans, you can see uh, they took a land, they did a few air rebases to get some air down here, um, and you can start to see just moving units by land, they're sort of trudging their way uh, forward. Um, I'm, I haven't put really any units on the coast to ferry across yet. I kind of have to figure out 
you know, what, uh, what I want to do with some of this. Um, I am thinking about, oh, I don't know, it's a tough call how I want to do this. There's a lot of ways to try to get into England eventually, and, and I've heard it advised, you know, you could try a sea lion while doing Spain. You might need to do that just to keep the UK off your back, because once, once we go into Spain, the British will be able to send guys down to Spain to help, and what we really need to make sure we can do as quickly as we can is take uh, Barcelona, Madrid, and Balbao, which are the factory hexes, what we need to take to uh, to conquer Spain. So getting into those areas is going to be tough. The nice thing is two of them are up here, but they're in mountains, so we're going to be fighting through mountains a lot uh, in Spain. And over here it's clear, but um, there's kind of some narrow ways to get up there. The Italian Marines can try to do some stuff down there to throw guys off balance, but um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. I looked at the nationalist Spain, at least I think they're nationalists. I have to double check. I think the red Spanish units are nationalists, are the default. Um, the Franco Spain. Uh, they, they have a decent number of ground units, um, I think, uh, that they would set up. But they don't have much in the way of an air force like at all. In fact, if I go look, Yeah, I think at most they have a fighter, so they don't have any bombers. It would be the Commonwealth sending guys down to help them out, and I'm not sure how much is going to happen with that. And so um, what it really matters is, like, I put the best Stukas down here with the idea being that we should have air dominance. We should be able to take care of the Spanish air uh, for now in a vacuum. I shouldn't need to put a whole lot of fighters down here. Um, but just to ensure that I've got air superiority, use the Stukas, ground strike the crap out of the Spanish, and then as soon as I can get across the mountains, um, it should be cakewalk from there, and, and encirclements and all the fun stuff. But I've never tried to invade Spain and whiff, so I really don't know what I'm getting myself into. Um, but I'm trying to bring units down so that we can, you know, have a good shot at it. Uh, and again, this, this guy down here is just going to keep heading west if he can. Just just picking off some of the North African countries. He will probably need support, so it's going to be really important for the Italians on their next impulse to focus on taking out these guys so that those units are freed up to head west. Um, and I realize that, you know, Italy doesn't have a huge amount of sea lift, that they can just move tons and tons of guys really, really quickly. So we're sort of, you know, having to go from one side of the map to the other. That takes a long time, uh, really to get moving, so um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But that's it for the Axis Impulse, and we'll kick it over to the Allies. I think I will simply do the same thing um, as before, and basically say that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take the action, you know, we'll perform the actions as the Allies. If there's anything really crazy to bring up, I'll, I'll record that. If not, we'll get to the end of the Impulse, and I'll show kind of what happened. Okay, so this is where things I just are hilarious sometimes. There's a joke amongst my WIF group that, um, I, at least I say it, that you know when it comes to naval stuff, I'll always roll badly. You know, every ten or every eight or nine that I'll ever roll will be in naval searches, and I'll never get the good good rolls for that. Um, and I'll always lose naval battles. And when I'm playing myself, you have to imagine, well, what does that look like? Well. I'll show you in just a second here, but I'm just showing the west part of the map. Um, so the Allies are going. The uh, Commonwealth chose to do a naval uh, to kind of get their naval stuff situated. Um, and the Free French, I was still trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to, them to do, and I and I they just kind of did it combined because right now the the Commonwealth or uh, the French rather the Free French only have a couple of units on the board. Period. It almost doesn't matter what they do. Um, and they have limited uh, or more restricted activity limits, but they don't have many units anyway. It doesn't really matter. So this is what I was thinking of doing. I, I, what I and this was probably stupid. And this is where I'm getting into the like I'm. This is almost unfair to the allies in this game, and I might even have to call the game early just because I I'm so risky with the allies. I really shouldn't be. I'm probably playing very poorly because um, I'm not thinking ahead very far. Apparently, I don't know. 
so this is what was going on. I was able to sneak past um, uh, oh, what, what am I looking at here? Um, sorry, I just realized I, I think I screwed something up now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, I guess that's as far as I could have gotten them. Um, hmm. I think I screwed. I think I screwed something. I didn't mean I, I was. What I ended up with was a Commonwealth unit in the zero box of the Eastern Med, but that doesn't really. Well, okay, never mind. I know what I was doing now. I'm sorry, I'm recording these clips with days in between, so you gotta understand I'm lose lose track. Um, all right, so I have forces out, even out into the Eastern Med. A Commonwealth convoy, or not a convoy, Commonwealth cruiser, which is in the zero box, and he's there purely to provide supply. Uh, and I have a Commonwealth sub out there to cause havoc for the Italians, uh, because their supply line uh, depends a lot on uh, uh, the Eastern Met, because they're all the way in Egypt. I can't trace supply through these empty uh, desert hexes that don't have uh, roads. So it, it's a position that the Commonwealth could try. Now, what happened was, to get over there, they had to get past the Italians in the west. And I rolled interception for the Italians to catch them, and I missed by a lot. I rolled like a 10. So they sailed right on past, and I got into the eastern Met, which is fine. And technically puts Malta back in supply, though I'm not making a whole lot of use of it. Then I used... A naval move to get a cruise, uh, an escort cruiser, and my two carriers, the Victorious and the Ark Royal, into the Western Med, into the four box, where um, that's as good as it's going to get for the Commonwealth. And because they have air advantage, I'm thinking, okay, with air advantage, if we end up with a combat, the, the Commonwealth will have the edge. They will would likely win an air contest, and then would get to do naval you know, naval air combat against the Italian fleet and start beating it up real bad. And the reality is, and it's kind of hard to tell unless you're more familiar with the system, even a little bit of naval air power um, goes a very, very long way, especially if your opponent is disadvantaged in the air. As soon as you clear their air out, um, you know, it's the uh, like the turkey shoot type of scenario where that naval air is just going to be picking off ships. And even if you try to knock planes out of the sky, I mean, it just, on on the whole damage and cost ratio, naval air is freaking awesome. And so that was the gamble. And I had sent out a cruiser to kind of be an escort for the, the aircraft carrier. I should have sent more, but I realized I had sent a lot of other ships out uh, to sea, and I didn't have a whole lot that could get out there and help escort immediately. But I figured, I, this we're probably good, right? Now, um, what ended up happening was uh, we rolled, what I, what I did as the Commonwealth is I said, well, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to roll for combat ourselves because we don't want combat there, necess like we don't need there to be combat because those ships there help provide supply through the med to the units that are stuck in Egypt at the moment. Um, and, and I I didn't feel like it really mattered, and if the Italians wanted to try, um, again, we were relying on the air power of the Commonwealth to win. So it was like, you know, we, we felt really safe, right, as the Commonwealth. But the Italians get the option uh, to say, no, I do want to try to have combat there and force a roll. That's the uh, uh, step E, opponent's naval combat, because units did move into here, the Italians could call for a search roll. And we rolled. And... This was the result. Just to be clear, that's a 10, not a 0. So the red die is the Allies, the Commonwealth. The green-black die is the Axis. So with the 3 rolled, all the Italians are in. Um, and uh, while, whoops, while it does mean that the Commonwealth will probably be in, because we're going to select that 4 box, um, they're doing it with a roll of 10, which means they are as flat-footed as possible. You know, the only way this could have been worse for the Allies is if I had rolled a 1. 
as the axis. So this is this is very much lopsided in favor of the Italians. And here's the thing. We could get into all the different ways we could cut this. What it basically equates to is um, the Allies have seven surprise points. Four for being in the four box, and the Axis roll to three, so they get seven. The Italians are going to get uh, 14, but I think actually 15, because we have a nav out there, which allows our C box to be one higher, uh, treated as one higher. So we're actually technically in like the five box, plus 10 is 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. So the Italians have eight surprise points, which could be used a number of different ways. If we let the combat stay the way it would be, which is a, na a naval air combat, there would be air combat. And we could decide um, how we wanted the air to be conducted. So we could, we could weaken the Commonwealth air, we could strengthen our own air, and have that kind of played out and then let the naval bomber, you know, assuming the naval bomber can get through, um, do its run on the Commonwealth ships. Um, but the, the danger is the Italians don't have a fighter. So there's always going to be the danger that however the Commonwealth decides to divvy up their carriers, they're going to have probably two to three uh, air-to-sea factors coming through to destroy Italian ships, which is very much a bad thing. So instead, what the Italians can do is use four of the eight surprise points to make this a surface combat. Um, so basically meaning like the surprise points are such that the carrier planes don't even get off the deck and they are the aircraft and the other ships of the Commonwealth are under the guns of the Italian Navy. And what's really important about this is that because I didn't put enough escorts out, it is quite likely that the, the carriers are going to be damaged somehow because without any options, the owner can pick how to take losses, but I only have the one ship, the one surface ship, that's going to take a sink or a damage, and then everything else is going to happen basically to the, the carrier. So I might not, you know, the Italians might not sink the aircraft carriers here, but they're definitely going to be forced out, and the whole gambit of the Commonwealth, which felt very safe, just due to the luck of the die roll, is atrociously bad for them. And, and again, very bad for them all game, this especially so. This is very atypical of, of a game that Italians are doing extraordinarily well. So, there you go. So, um, I'm going to work out exactly what is going to happen here. It's pretty deterministic already because we rolled the dice, so it's just adjudicating where do all these surprise points go. But first four points saying uh, this is a surface combat, and then we could use the remaining four surprise points to do shifts on the combat chart, or using it to pick the first uh, loss, so the Italians could say, no, we're going to sink a, a carrier, for example, instead of sinking whatever ship the Commonwealth would want. So we, got, we have to figure out what's the most effective way to, to do this as the Italians, since they have the choice. Uh, so we'll come back and I'll talk about what we did. Okay, so here we're going to adjudicate the, the results here. I sort of spread out the units a little bit. Um, and technically, one of these Italian ships is also flipped for for causing the search roll, but we're not going to worry too hard about that for the moment because we've got to adjudicate all this. So um, we also have the Ajax, which was the Commonwealth ship uh, that we captured as the Italians uh, a turn ago or a couple turns ago or whatever. So this is actually an Italian unit. I've kept it stacked like like this to kind of help the keep track of that. Um, so these guys are in the three box, but they're in, in the combat, and then these guys are in the four box, and in the combat. The uh, nav bomber doesn't really matter here because it's surface combat. Um, and then, uh, so together, the ship you know, uh, ship attack values of the three Commonwealth ships, there are five. Five surface combat points against the total of seven Italian ships actually means that there could be a, a damaged result against the Italians. Most of that is a function of how many ships are out there. So, I mean, there's enough ships, you know, you're going to hit a broadside of the barn, even though there's not a huge amount of gunnery across those three Commonwealth ships, they're going to hit something. And, and I could pick, I could just say, oh, it's going to be this little cruiser. Um, whoops. But 
I, I don't I don't want the Italians to take any hits because that's going to be more production that we have to spend uh, on the Navy and, and the Italians don't get a whole lot of production anyway. That seems bad. Um, and, and if we look at what the Italians are going to do, they can do 30. They have 30 gunnery points or three attack 30 attack value against three ships is one sink, one damage, three aborts, which is pretty, that's pretty good to me. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd take that. So what we're going to do with the four surprise points is we're going to shift the Commonwealth surface combat power one, two columns to the left, which takes them off the chart, which means they do no results to the Italians at all. And then we're going to adjudicate the 30 uh, Italian combat factor against the three ships, which is, again, the, the X, the D, and the A. Uh, so the Commonwealth definitely wants the sink to occur on the Fiji, so we're going to roll the die. Um, we want an 8, 9, or 10 to make the sink damaged. And we rolled a 3, so the Fiji is sunk. Um, we'll go ahead and put it over in our force pools or dead pile. Um, then we get uh, a damaged result, um, which I think we're going to look to apply... Oh, I, um, it's tough. So here's a conundrum. The, the Arc Royal has a better air component, but it also has better armor, which makes it more likely that we'll avoid a damage. But if we do take a damage, there's more air component lost. So I think I'll, I'll have the damage go on the Victorious, so we need a 7, 8, 9, or 10 to turn that damage into an abort. And I rolled an 8. So this just becomes uh, an abort. So we'll just flip it like so. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have three aborts, which, I mean, I, I'm almost confident it doesn't matter because as soon as you get, if you save on an abort, you get a half abort. And so even if, he, if the Commonwealth saved on the first two, that still equals an abort. So it's almost not worth uh, rolling. So, yeah, he, he aborts. So um, they're going to abort back to Gibraltar. And the Italians are still in great shape here. Um, whoops, I just threw a counter. So as it matters here, we've got two flip ships for search. These guys are still a-okay. In the Western Med, and now Malta is out of supply, and these units over here are doing basically nothing useful except maybe that sub. So this was really, really, really bad for the Allies. That's a bummer. Now, we can be happy because when it came to rolling the dice against the aircraft carriers, none of them got damaged. So they're purely, they got chased off, they had a return to port, um, but that is it, which <sighs> means for the rest of the turn they're kind of out of it, um, unless we get an HQ down there to flip them. I don't think that's going to happen. The only other things that the Western Allies are really focused on doing is getting their own naval air out to the North Sea, just sort of providing coverage. They had moved a few other ships out to kind of help screen things a little bit better. And then down here, um, we've got a French, a free, Fran free French uh, unit that came out of Senegal, which had become free French after we collapsed Vichy, uh, actually had a transport and is being moved um, to uh, North Africa. Now what I was going to do was um, I was thinking about railing a unit over here and I'm not sure I'm going to do that now. So this is still mid Allied Impulse. I haven't finished yet. That was all the naval stuff but then it was going to be um, uh, and technically that transport left Morocco so I can't get this unit back up there this turn. I have to wait till next impulse, uh, rather, but I was going to uh, rail the Moroccan French unit to Algiers, which I asked online to make sure um, Free French Algiers minor capital is a secondary supply source for a Moroccan Free French unit, so I could rail it, they'd be face down, they would be in supply uh, while in the city, so that by the time this German 
armor gets up here. You know, it's got a roadblock that won't be easily uh, hurt. But what could happen is we know that the Italians have both a paratrooper and a marine sort of at the ready that they could use. Um, and what we may see uh, happen with that, I think I lost a transport somewhere, unfortunately, that I can't find. So I knocked a I knocked some counters around. That's unfortunate. It I had it. What? Oh, never mind. I know what's going on. Okay. So so the whole thing is, um, the Italians are going to have the ability to get down here to Oran. Uh, they could land here because it is it's a port, which is great. It's uh, uh, clear terrain, so they could get in here, and then they project a Zoc. Uh, into this hex, which breaks the line of supply back to Fez, which is the closest supply city for a Moroccan unit. So, if I move the Moroccan unit to Algiers, um, what could happen is that the Italians come from behind in Oran and land there, and then they cut supply, and then this unit is out of supply, which then allows the German armor unit to squash it, and then Algiers falls. And then Morocco is missing a defender, uh, and, you know, the Commonwealth is going to be struggling to make up for all of that. So North Africa, I mean, we're, we're in a pinch, and I don't know what I should do to address this. Um, the only benefit I have right now is that the Italians aren't going to have the ability uh, to really uh, send the Marine out until they get their Amphib, which will allow it to invade with full power, until January, February. It is coming. Um, and then otherwise, you know, we're reliant on the paratroopers, um, which, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, I don't think can quite get there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Mountain doesn't have air stacking, so in actuality... Hmm. Yeah, this is tough. I mean, this really is tough, because it. if I go to Algiers with the Moroccan unit, I could land from here, the paratroopers down here, and then... Um, uh, it's a whole logistical nightmare, right? I mean, if, if we come too far forward, then we're basically going to allow the Germans to put the Moroccan unit out of supply and take Algiers anyway. So then the opposite thought is, well, then merely put this Moroccan unit up against the border, or maybe in Iran, where it's not going to be as easy and you can at least you can fight from here and be in supply... I don't know. This is tough. So I'll have to think on this, and I still have to do the Soviet Union. Hmm. Okay, so I decided to sort of split the risk a little bit, and uh, you can see I put I did a rail move into Iran, thinking, okay, we can hold the port, um, we project, we're in supply, so we project, um, well, are we in supply? One, two, three, four. Ah, I just realized that in order for the, in order to get supply, we actually have to trace to Algiers to be on the rail line because we can't do it ourselves. And as soon as the bad weather hits later this turn, um, hmm, one, two, three, four. Okay. Well, maybe what we need to do. Nah, we'll stay there. Because here's the thing. So even if we lose supply, the the Germans aren't going to have enough time to get down here. The weather will be too poor. Uh, it's nice now, but it's November, December, so the weather's about to turn crappy. Even if this guy's out of supply for a little bit, um, he'll be in supply later, and uh, we'll be able to flip back up, and he'll be fine. So I think this is all right. So we moved him over there. That's all that we can really operate on at the moment. Um, the Soviet Union didn't do much. They shuffled some units around. I've elected to not go into the Baltic states until 41, uh, mostly because uh, to do so would hurt U.S. entry too much, and the 41 chits will be better for the U.S., so we don't want to 
mess that up too much. I did realize that I, I'm not 100% certain I've been rolling for tension um, for the U.S. entry stuff. And so um, I, I was going back through that and basically, um, let's see. Yeah, so I, I don't think I was doing the tension. Uh, I think I've been forgetting to roll for that. So I, I re-rolled for the last couple of U.S. entry options taken, and I ended up moving three chits into the tension pool, uh, which escalates the tension, uh, but also lowers the entry. So there's sort of a, um, you know, a, a, a positive outcome of that, but a negative in outcome of that. Um, and I'm trying to look to see, like, the special rules for the campaign in, in regards to the U.S. entry are that uh, all markers in the GEIT pools count at double value. So I almost read that to mean they're double in the tension pool as well. Um, but I'm going to have to double check that. It's not relevant right now, but it may become relevant later. Um, and higher tension helps certain things happen, so I'll have to double check that. But But the rules which again I had printed out from the living campaign rules. You can say it talks about the entry markers and only the GEIT pools, that's plural, means the entry pool and the tension pool, I believe. And all markers are double value. So um, that's important because there's certain things like the US gearing up its production requires a certain amount of tension, which we now may meet the threshold for, but now we don't have the US entry to take the option for gearing up, at least not yet. So we'll have to look at that. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I think that's it for the allies, so we will move uh, the marker up and we'll take a look at what the axis will do next. Okay, just very quickly, um, amazingly I rolled a 2 for weather, which means that uh, we get another set of totally fine, clear impulses in November, December, which is pretty bizarre. Um, and all that really occurred is our continued advance in Algeria with our Armored Corps uh, in the east. Not a whole lot has occurred. Um, I guess I could search for... I guess I could try to search for that one British ship, but unfortunately I don't think the fight would go very well. Um, so we're not going to chance it, and the Commonwealth can't. I did end up you know, moving some more units around the isolated guys there that are out of supply. But here's the thing. The armor that's there <clears throat> is basically forcing a situation where even with our additional mechanized units, we still are equating the Commonwealth with armor, and we can't pick the Blitz table. Um, and it's still too risky to attack them due to the Nile uh, Delta. So we can't... Um, we, we can't get anything better than a 3 to 2 on the assault table chart. And until we flip them, we can't do anything. I did move up a bomber um, that will help. I did try to bomb with our fighter as a fighter bomber, but I need. there's no way they can get supply, and, and these Commonwealth ships are kind of useless where they're at for the moment. So I think we're doing good there. Um, not much else. Uh, oh, I did move paratroopers to... Uh, Sardinia, um, sort of one leg in the journey. We'll have to wait till next turn to air transport them elsewhere um, is the only problem, but we'll be getting one, two, three, four, five, six down here. Um, so soon enough anyway. Uh, and yeah, right, so we're just, you know, we're working our way through it. Uh, more German units came down south to the border with Spain. Uh, one HQ is moving out here in order to be a supply provider to uh, subs and navies uh, operating out of Brest. We need that because France is a conquered country, uh, which means we can use Paris as a secondary supply source, but f places like Brest, these cities and ports over here, are farther away from the capital, which is the secondary supply source. So if we actually wanted a base... Axis naval units out of the coast here to do Atlantic raiding. 
um, we actually need an HQ parked out there. And I've chosen von, uh, von Lieb to do that. Um, I am keeping an armored HQ on the coast because I realized I probably need an HQ for Sea Lion, so we're keeping him up in the north. While uh, von Bach is down in the south, now he's an infantry HQ, but we do have two armor core, a mech core, and plenty of other units that are going to be uh, the hammer heading into Spain. We're also sending off some Italian units that will be able to cooperate with the German HQs for supply um, for some added oomph since they were in the local area. So um, the writing should now be on the wall for the Allies, the realization that they're going for a sea lion and they're going to hit Spain. Uh, but it probably won't be until after winter before we'll really be able to get in there and, and do it. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. So very quick Axis Impulse, nothing too crazy. We couldn't do a whole lot more. Next Impulse could be much better. So uh, next is going to be the Allies, um, and we'll figure out what they're going to do with the fine weather. Okay, Allies, uh, France is doing a combined. They moved that Senegalese unit um, to Casablanca, so they are in place there, but they got a flip because they started the turn at sea. Um, now, you might have, over here we've got some Italian subs that are threatening more convoys and ships out of Cape St. Vincent. I have not decided to search with those subs because the Commonwealth has put one of their aircraft carriers as an escort over uh, the, uh, the, the convoys. And basically, I mean, if I find the Commonwealth and it rolls very badly for the Commonwealth, we might have enough surprise points to keep uh, the planes out of the sky via surprise, but if we don't, and instead there's not enough shifts to make a difference, then the uh, Commonwealth aircraft are going to hit our sub. So this is the one case where, um, like, if I had a light, you know, I had a light carrier or something, I could send it down here. Sending this whole ship seems like a lot, and even puts that aircraft carrier in danger for the moment, but <clears throat> the odds aren't perfect for the Italians, so we'd have to roll, you know, the, the, the Commonwealth would have to roll very, very poorly. And while that just happened recently, it's not enough that I want to try it just yet. So uh, the Italians are operating as a threat out here. Now, <clears throat> what the Commonwealth was trying to do was they said, okay, well, if our guys are out of supply and it's going to stay that way, we're going to send the, the revenge home. So they are going to return to base. Um, they don't want to return to base to Malta because it's out of supply, um, which, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not playing with, uh, I guess I'm not playing with, um, isolated reorg, so I guess I could... Well, no. I, I think I want to... I, I, there's some restriction that if a ship starts out of supply in a port, it can't do as much. Um, and I don't like the idea of that. So I want to send the Revenge home to Gibraltar. But what I did is I rolled a 3 on uh, the interception uh, roll. And basically... Um, yeah, not good. Uh, they're going to get intercepted by the Italians... And uh, it's not looking good for them because I rolled a three for the Italians. So the interception successful. Uh, they have to go into a box, you know, basically, and they would have uh, gone into, I, I guess it would have been, let's see, the two box, and that would leave them still one more movement point to get home to Gibraltar. But <clears throat> I rolled a six. For the Commonwealth's response, and uh, they're they're going to get. I I'm I must be very bad at the naval stuff in, in World in Flames. I'm playing it like an in-person game as Japan, and I'm not great there either. But just playing the classic game is tough. I mean, with the deluxe game, I've got more room for failure, I guess. But here, I mean, the Commonwealth's just losing. <laughs> I'm taking such huge risks. I really need to rethink my gameplay here. Um, so basically what's going to happen is, I think in this case we probably would let the, uh, the naval bomber do all the work for us because there's no allied air to contest it. 
and basically, you know, for that battleship, the Revenge, um, we would do naval air combat. There would be anti-aircraft fire, which uh, the anti-air value of the Revenge is at two. Against one bomber, there's no result. So there's no, not enough air, anti-air would affect our guy. <clears throat> We're basically operating with 10 surprise points versus five, so five surprise points for the Italians total on these guys, which is enough for two shifts for the naval, which means we're going to have four air-to-sea factors against uh, one ship, which is going to be at least a damage result, potentially. So let's see what we roll. And uh, it manages to avoid being damaged, and... Um, we'll, we'll essentially get to abort. I mean, that's, he's going to get home, but he, you know, we almost damaged him, I guess, is the end result of that little altercation. So, um, I think we end up having to flip another unit out here, but that's well and good. So, yeah, I mean, the Commonwealth's just not getting to, <laughs> to where they want to be. Um, I mean, they, they got the ship there, which is fine, but gosh, they're, you know, they're very lucky that apparently the Italian bombers couldn't plant, uh, couldn't couldn't plant a hit on the ship. Apparently, is what that looks like, or or it hit and it didn't do enough damage to really be a major issue for it. Um, even with the surprise point bonus, it wasn't enough. So there you go. Um, now for the Commonwealth, there's not as much that they can really look at doing um, because it is winter. There's not as much. Uh, action that they can really look at um, that would be valuable. Uh, trying to see, you know, they do have some stuff here. Um, I guess this would have been a combined because they did do a naval move, but I think there's some landing moves that they would want to do. So combined two naval moves for the Commonwealth. I think they have taken all those na naval moves they want, but they do want some land moves, um, and they get three. So what they'll probably end up doing here is a little bit of shuffling uh, around one, four, just to get some guys down south, um, because I, at this point the Commonwealth probably suspects what's happening, right? that uh, sea lion is coming and they've got to get units you know they brought up an Indian unit they brought over a Canadian unit over here um, and let's see, I guess move one two three you know just just bringing these units <clears throat> closer to the obvious landing points um, I, I think the best place to land is probably uh, Harwick or Harwich I'm not sure how that's pronounced um, northeast of London uh, that, or we could do some fancy stuff uh, trying to do a, a marine invasion across the uh, coastal hexes over here. But that's all that's dicey. We've got to figure out how that's all going to go. But the Germans probably aren't going to try it uh, until we have better weather. Because while it's been great November, December weather, uh, I, I, cannot, I cannot believe that it will be much better. Um, and the Commonwealth really doesn't have a reason to launch any air combats right now because... Uh, there's just really no point that, you know, the Germans aren't going to make an attack. There's no point in ground striking anything. They're just going to put their own air at risk. Uh, I don't think either side really wants to do that. So it's more, you know, handling that. Uh, the um, Russians don't have a whole lot more to do. They're basically stuck uh, for the moment, um, moving some units up and, and getting situated. But they can't do a whole lot either. For the moment um, so really a straightforward impulse <clears throat> we're going to go back to the axis we're going to roll weather and i rolled a one <laughs> so <clears throat> there you go uh it's going to be fine weather again for the axis um what can they even do with it they're starting to run out of steam but uh, we could figure something out okay very quickly uh tried to ground strike failed um, continuing to advance now very slowly because we're in mountains and the armor can't get very far. Basically, every impulse it can move one hex. Um, 
without flipping, and that's kind of what we need to do to get into Algiers. If the weather stays okay, um, we actually might be able to get to Algiers by the end of the uh, the uh, turn. I'm not sure that'll happen, but we'll see. Um, Germans have finished moving a bulk of their forces uh, against the border of Spain, so you know they're they're very close to being able to get going there whenever they feel the weather will allow it. Um, and then up in the north, again, you know, relatively easy movement forward, sort of spreading out uh, some garrisons. We probably need to build some more garrisons for France, but um, the other thing is now we got to start watching out for garrisoning against the Soviet Union, which is still sort of moving in place. And there's one... I could move some of uh, my minor powers o over east as well, but you can see I'm sort of positioned to threaten to invade Yugoslavia, and I'm considering it. I just... I just am not 100% certain if I want to do it yet or not. Um, it might be better, you know, it, it, in the big scheme of things, it's not important, but what I would like to do uh, is be able to take it out um, so that we, we have a clear field of movement back here once the war with Russia eventually happens at some point, which I'm sure it will. I'd rather get this cleaned up so we don't have... A situation where like the Romanians are trapped or something because we get against this border. I'd, I'd like to clear Yugoslavia. I don't think they have that many strong units. Um, I think we have enough units that you know we could make the push in decent weather. Um, I don't think that would be too 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 difficult to achieve. Probably need an HQ of some sort out there, but um, yeah, not 100% sure about that. So uh, yeah. That's straightforward stuff. Um, they did, I think, as much as they could really do. Um, we'll send it back to the Allies, which uh, at this point, I don't think there's really anything that they can do. Um, I think they are as done as they really can be. Um, the French literally can't do anything at all. The Soviet Union doesn't have much that they even want to do. And the Commonwealth, if anything, you know, can move some more units south, and, and maybe that's about it. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's much more they can do. Um, garrison Dover, just to keep that marine situation from happening in the north there. So I moved the unit over here. Um, but the Italian, yeah, I mean, the, even even the Commonwealth, just, they don't have a lot they can do. Um, it's a winter turn, which ordinarily means this goes very fast, but it's going slower. It's just there's nothing for them to really do. <clears throat> so now the axis will go, and we'll roll for weather again. And I rolled a 5, which is probably a lot worse. Um, okay, it, it, is, it is worse. So the Arctic has storms, and the north uh, temperate has rain. But the Mediterranean is still fine, so... <laughs> We're still able to, to get going. We'll have the Germans continue to move forward. Um, the Italians are out of gas uh, for bombing in the southeast, so not much they can do there. Um, these guys will move into place. Uh... Not a whole lot left to do. Yeah, I mean, even the Germans, I mean, they just don't have a whole lot that they can accomplish. Yeah, hmm. Um, general movement, but just still not as much uh, to do as you might think they would want to do, I guess, is the trick. Um, yeah, that's a tough call. Um, I mean, the Axis just does not have much that they want to do. Um, they'll, they can roll it, they can end it on a 1, and they don't. So it goes back to the Allies. Um, I think here the Allies just want to pass. They, they want the turn to end. They don't want anything else to happen. Um, so they will both pass, and so they could end it on a four or less, and I roll it on a one. So that ends the turn, 
and November, December is is done. Um, before I stop for the day for me, which this is all one video for you guys, I will roll Partisans and let's see what is that? Norway, nope. Ireland, no. Germany, no. Poland, maybe, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so no issues. Uh, in Poland, South America, Siberia, Africa might be an issue for somebody. Siam and USSR. So no issues there except for Africa. Um, ooh, we could have a... We could have uh, a partisan show up in Africa somewhere. Um, and I feel like I want it to be Cameroon because that would mess up free French supply immensely. Um, so let's see if I can roll that. And I believe that means they do not have partisans. Okay. Um, U.S. entry. Uh, the U.S. does not get a free chip this turn. Soviet Union gets one, which they'll put on the offense. Um, or I'm sorry, yeah, offense. Though they're behind the time, Germany's going to get two. And they're going to both put them on the defensive, though they're very low chips. So uh, the game is now kind of on for the... Soviets try to get their garrison value in such a, a level that they could declare war on the Germans because they need to provide a distraction for the Commonwealth. That's sort of the metagame that, hey, if, if Germany's not even trying to invade the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union needs to get in a gear and try to force a conflict as soon as they're able because otherwise the Germans, the Axis, will concentrate on the Commonwealth and overwhelm them. Um, and then we got the return to base phase. So I'll do all that off camera, uh, and then I'll get into final reorg in production. Uh, and the Germans did not get to conquer Algeria. So that's going to be one thing to keep in mind. So the uh, Allies still have use of the Algerian resource, which will be important um, for them. And yeah, we'll see what else comes up. So I'll be back with that. Okay, so I got production done, uh, return to base, and reorg and all that fun stuff done uh, here for November, December 1940. Um, something to keep in mind, going into 1941, we're going to have uh, new stuff in all of the uh, force pools, which is all cool, um, and a bunch of other things to think about with 41, new entry chits, uh, a lot of cool stuff. So um, a lot of neat, you know, better units are going to start showing up in the force pools, but we didn't have access to those guys yet, so what I built is merely what we could get. Um, looking at the Commonwealth first, uh, they are building a bomber, which is an okay bomber, more of a strategic bomber here. Um, and they're going three turns ahead, one, two, three. Uh, we are getting an armored core, a uh, white print armored core, quite strong. I, the Commonwealth realizes sea line is, is probably gonna happen. Uh, and so they're putting a priority on getting some land units, strong land units that can defend the home islands. And I focused on building from force pools where we were more likely to draw British units than Indian, Canadian, or Australian units. So um, it's going out on the board, uh, or on the production spiral, I should say. They're repairing the London and the Norfolk uh, ships that were in the repair pool just to get some ships back, stuff they lost that maybe they shouldn't have, but they did. Um, so that's it for the Commonwealth. Uh, for the Soviet Union, um, and I'm, you'll notice, the French aren't building anything. They don't have any build points. Uh, we will have to basically lend and send the French to Cameroon build points that they can use uh, to build stuff. But they're not going to be able to build a whole lot. So it's almost like, you know, what point is there for the French to even do that? Is there any sense in building French units? I'm not sure about that. There's probably some strategic thing we could be doing there, but anyway. Uh, so the Soviet Union, uh, the Soviet Union has actually built a lot of their force pool for 1940. Um, a lot of the stuff we would normally look at, so they can kind of dip into more than just infantry. So we're building a uh, black print armored core that will go out 
4. So the Allies are building up armor. Uh, we have a motorized infantry black print unit uh, for three turns. Uh, a garrison, just because uh, we could afford it, um, just to get it out there. So that is good. Black print garrison, and then uh, building a bomber. Uh, and this is the Su-2 or M88 Su-2, and uh, it's a it's a decent bomber, and that'll go two turns ahead. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, the Americans are kind of in a weird place where they're still only getting five build points, and so. Um, we're working on the AMF situation, or rather, uh, I just realized I'm not sure that I can build AMFs. Ah, I can't build AMFs. So I can't recall if I had built these earlier and they started in the force pool or not, but I could not have picked them. So my bad, uh, we're going to finish building uh, a transport. So there might have been, I'm going to have to look at this, I might have accidentally uh, put some production on amps, which I will hold back from from now on. Uh, my mistake. The U.S. are not allowed to build amps right now, uh, I believe, anyway. Um, anyway, getting past that, the Italians don't have a lot of production either. They are building uh, a bomber, which is an okay bomber. Nice range, though, nine range, and a militia. So they couldn't build a whole lot, but this seemed to make sense just to get some some units out. Uh, that could do uh, some damage and could be helpful when it comes to Spain in a few turns. Uh, so that made sense. And then for the Axis, um, kind of an interesting set of things. So uh, the Axis is building out the Guderian HQ. Uh, I would like to have another HQ. We probably need more dedicated HQs on the board in general to support all the different fronts. So it was important to get Guderian going. Uh, so there's that. Uh, they're building the last uh, couple of bombers in their force pool for 1940, so they're not, they're kind of okay for German bombers. I realize you guys are seeing fuzziness. They're not great, um, and it cost me 10 build points to build these guys, which was quite a lot, uh, even with the great production the Germans have at the moment, but I want to get them cleared out because next turn we're going to get some 41 bombers, and that's going to be better stuff, and I want to just make sure we've got all our bombers out. Bombers to take hits when we're attacking England, uh, and making it so that we're more likely to get the better bombers anyway from 41. Uh, and then um, we are uh, working on building uh, a transport, and this is from the uh, face, or this is from the construction pool, so it's going to come up face up uh, in May, June. So just again, building out our sea lift capacity. Uh, and that's really it for 1940, November, December. That's it for 1940. We The peace step, there's nothing to do. We did not conquer Algeria. Um, next turn's initiative is going to be very important. The Axis would really like to have initiative so that they can get into Algiers and keep moving west. Um, but we'll have to see kind of what, what happens there. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be really important for the Axis to get initiative, actually. So uh, we'll see what happens there. We're going to have some reinforcements to deal with uh, at the beginning of the next turn, but we'll worry about that shortly. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. Uh, see you guys in the next video. We'll, we'll close this one off here. Thanks.